give him a praise. Lift your hands and magnify the Lord. Stand on your feet and give him the Lord a praise in his house. Is he worthy to be praised? Is he worthy to be praised? Come on, give him a praise. Give him praise. Give him worship. Give him more worship. Double up your worship. Double up your worship. If you used to say praise him, say praise him, praise him. Hallelujah. Yes, brother Brown. Praise him, praise him. Does he, is he worthy? That's the question. Is he worthy? Does he deserve honor? Does he deserve glory? Does he deserve adoration? Does he deserve the best of us? So give him the best of us. Oh, somebody worship God. Oh, bless the name of Jesus. Amen. I'm excited about our risen Savior. Praise his holy name. Praise him. We're drawing close to supper. And the man said, when I survey the wondrous cross on which the prince of glory died, my richest gain I count but loss and poor contempt and all my pride. Him so far bid it, Lord, that I should boast. Save in the death of Christ, my Lord. All the vain things that charms me most, preacher. Him say, I sacrifice them too. Bless the name of Jesus. Him say, see from his head, his hands, his feet. Sorrow and love flowed mingled down. Him said, did hear such love and sorrow meet? Our tongues compose so rich a crown. The man found his gratefulness, preacher. Him said, wow, the old realm of nature mine. It would be a present far too small. Love so amazing. So divine demands my soul, my life, my all. Praise him. I have decided to follow Jesus. And with that preacher, there's no turning back. With that, there's no, um, there's no middle ground. Preacher, I was explaining to a brother this week that I'm, I'm on a plane in the middle, amen, of the sky, preacher, in the heavens, the plane. And I know I can't say one stop. Because there ain't no parachute on this plane. Praise him. The kingdom is my destination. I ain't stopping at no station. Bless the name of Jesus. When I got baptized, preacher, we took off. Can't say one stop, preacher. I was in a taxi, preacher, going to money once. And the driver was playing some lewd music. Mr. Driver, can you change it? He said, no. I'm preaching, I bush him and I tell me no. no. I said, one stop driver. He looked around him and said, No, we're in the room. We have to leave the room. I said, I have to come out because we are playing. I can't manage. I can't, I can't stomach it to where I'm going. And the man said to me, Okay, I'll we'll change it. Because no, we're not there. So if you stop. Preaching at even no, we're not there for the car. Stop. It's just the road, preacher and bush. And he stopped. He changed the thing. You get me, preacher? What we're doing now is like we're in a plane. You can't tell the pilot one stop. You have to be at the right. Bless the name of Jesus. The man said, Jesus, Savior, pilot me. Jesus is our pilot. Sister Rhonda, we're not saying one stop. Because the only way can come off a plane of a jump off. He's sure dead. He's sure dead. Are we ready to stay in the plane? Are we ready to remain in the ship? Unless you abide in the ship. You're going to perish. So we're going to stay in the plane. We are going to make it home. Because our pilot is not a trainee. Our pilot, amen, is not a, is not a first timer. It's not a novice. He's a great, big, wonderful God. Are you blessed today? Can I greet the ministers of the gospel, our beloved deacon and sister Buchanan, Evangelist Clark and Sister Clark, bless the name of the Lord. Amen. Our moderator, Sister Campbell, all the wonderful saints, praise musicians, saints, praise him, those who are in the house of the living God, men of God, women of God, children of God, those on the line who fit all those portfolios, visiting loved ones, I greet you all. A Sabbath day greetings, praise God. Sabbath day greetings to everybody. Amen. Bless the name of the Lord. 
name and the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run into it and are safe. Brother Carl, welcome preacher. Good to see you, man. Praise him. Too many pages. Tired and snare we have come, but we are here. The song man, Sister Nicole, would say, I'm still here. And I'm grateful. Bless the name of the Lord. Amen. And today, amen, the world continues to be in chaos. Praise him. The politicians are confused. But God is still God. So because he remains constant, our praise must be constant. Praise him. Praise him. Preacher, we had, had a conversation with the Lord preacher. It was one of the nicest ones. I was there crying to him. This was just yesterday, by the way. It's not like two weeks ago or anything like that. This was like yesterday, right? So I'm driving. I'm like, God. Preacher, the tears are in my eyes. I'm like, God. I'm saying, Lord, um, you are... You are right. You are, you are good. You, you are great. You are, and whatever. But we have a couple questions. I don't know. So I started to ask him. And preacher, the response that came to me was so profound that I humbled myself Amen. and just said, thank you, Lord. I get you, preacher. I was saying, God, men of God like Moses, you, you call him up, you hide him in the cleft of the rock, and you showed him your glory. And I said, God, you need to, you, can you give some kind of consolation that is more than what I have right now? Just believe me. The words that came back to me were so profound. God said, if me follow you, this is what the preacher, it was so, it was so profound. He says, if I follow you, nobody would be in pain, nobody would die. And I would have to come tomorrow. And some are not ready. You know, some of them, you know. Some of them are not ready. Preacher, you miss it. Preacher, you miss it, preacher. If me follow you, that I mean, if me follow you, oh my God, Mr. God, you do not follow me. Do. Me need to follow you. So, preacher, Mr. Lord, Mr. Lord, me go, me go, me go, me go, me go. Where, 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 where preacher said to the rest? Mr. God, me go hold my position. Preacher, me just start to worship. And I felt better. He said, God, you are God and I'm man, and I'm going to hold my position. He said, you are the creator. You understand the road. I'm going to hold my position. Yeah. Yeah. I can't take a from God. I have to hold my position. He said, God, I submit to you. God, I hear you loud and clear. And I get it now. And so, brethren, I give him thanks. We praise him. This morning, we were blessed by a wonderful comment. Sister Shantan, normally I write down 10, like 1 to 10, because I normally have 10 things. Because, you know, these speakers in Georgia, they be like, they be, I don't know who, who they get it from. But they be long speakers. I don't know. So I put 1 to 10, I got to 3, and you be like, these are my few words. I'm like, oh my gosh, there were few. But they were so profound and sound. Can we give God the glory? She said balance is important. She said God is the master and creator of time. Don't forget this. And she said everything has a finite point. God is infinite. He promises infinite joy, infinite worship. We're going to have the privilege to do infinite worship. Those are things, three things, easy to remember that I can hold on to this week. Hey Amen. Balance is important. God is the master of time. And everything here that we all celebrate and figure out is finite. But God is infinite. That's why we hold on to God. Because he's the part of us that will go on and on and on. Shall we bless the name of the Lord? Somebody give God the glory, give him praise. Clap your hands for Jesus. Hey, shout hallelujah. hallelujah. It's the highest praise. Could you stand and give me the subject, the scripture reading, and the memory verse? We're going to do that because we're going to go into the prior, the midday prior. What is subject school, scripture reading, and the memory verse? <laughs> Family recreation. Our scripture reading is taken from Ecclesiastes 3, 1 through 15. And our memory verse is taken from Ecclesiastes 3, verse 13. Let us repeat it together if you know it. Or if you can read it. 
Amen and bless the name of the Lord. It's the it's the gift of God. Shall we praise His holy name? We worship His holy name. When we return from prayer, we'll do the, the, the comment on the um we'll give we get another comment on the subject. But the objective today is to offer some guidelines for enjoying appropriate recreation that should build and enhance family bonding. We're gonna go into this lesson. May God grant us Amen. Many and bountiful blessings, yes? Amen. Praise God. I pray that you will amen, open our hearts to make the changes that will benefit not only our individual um, selves, but our families. We have had a stretch of lessons that addresses or that address rather the needs of families. Praise him. We have had the string began with um, courtship. The value and joy, you know, the pursuing a partnership through courtship. And then we went into bones of my bones. And then looking beyond the wedding. And now family recreation. Praise him. Praise him. So the essence of it is that there's a continuation and new levels that we can reach as families, yes? And I hope that with today's lesson, which is pretty, um, it's not a new lesson. We have done it before. So I hope as we go through, we'll refresh the things that were said and get new juice from it. Um, praise him. It says family recreation. Praise him. Brother Roach, what comes to your mind when you see this subject? We give God, God thanks again for Sister Buchanan, who gave a wonderful commentary this morning on this subject, um, and on the scripture reading, rather. Brother Roach, what do you understand from family recreation? Praise him. Praise him. Praise him. Praise his holy name. Amen. Praise him again. Praise Amen. The Praise the Lord. When I, when I look at it the first time, I said, you know, it's a time, you know, for just wholesome bonding. That's that's how I look at it. A time for, you know, I mean, like, not, not no, no, no Lego thing, but a wholesome family bonding and you know and the choice have to be made with you know with, with with the family you know the husband and wife as they hear they're gonna say okay this is what we're gonna do for the family despite all things if there's something going on that you can't even leave your house you have to have that 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 kind of a wholesome bonding you know that's what that's what i look at it's a it's a time where regardless of all the labor that you've done through the you know through, through the times you must always choose a time you know to just to just refresh you know, I, 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 I have that in my, in my system. And I, and I think that no matter what bills and stuff, you got to organize yourself that you, 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 you clear certain things so you can have that time. Because it is, it is of God. It is of God because God tell you in, in, in the, even the memory verse, he it 3, 13, he tell you that. And also every man should eat and drink, you know, and enjoy all the good of, of his labor. Praise the Lord. Praise Worship the Lord, saints. Praise Put your hands together for Brother Roach and a and, and lovely comment he made on family recreation. So what is family? When you hear the word family, what does that mean? Family. What's family? Just, if you just raise your hand, I'll, I'll echo what you say. Your kin. K-I-N. Like your father said, boy, put the kin over this. Not that way. K-I-N, your kin is your family. Could you, yes, could you break it down a little bit more? Kin, your kin. People who are related to you, love it. Any more? Uh, 
the same heritage. Same heritage, love it. So your family then, um, it's a social unit, yes? Praise him. It's one of the basic units of society. Church is one too. School is one. But I'm not talking, I mean like, like units. Place, um, um, these are units that pass on learning. And effect and do things. Praise him. It includes parents, children, and the families consider church to be a group. Praise him. And the last time I taught this, I said, this group can be living together or you could be living apart. For example, I don't live with my mother and my father, but they're my family. I don't live with my siblings, Miss Camille, but they're my family. Praise him. Praise him. Preacher, we don't live in the same house, but we are family. Get it better, bro? So you don't have to live the same exact place to be called a family. So we want to establish that from now. But for the purpose of this lesson, maybe we focus on people who actually live, live together. That unit of people that live together. And we talked about different types of families. You have families with, with the mother and the father alone. Because you may not start having probably children yet. Praise him. Praise him. You could have um, the mother, the father, and children. Which we, call, we call it nuclear family. You may have relatives that live with you. Whether, whether um, parents... Um, older persons, younger persons. We call it an extended family. Praise him. Praise him. And you may have situations where you may have um, only one parent, whether through death or divorce or separation or different factors. You may have one parent living with children and stuff like that. And that's a single parent also. Praise him. So we have different types of families. Legitimate Bible kind of families. Praise him. The word we're creation by the roach mentioned, he said wholesome bonding. And he said the word, he mentioned, he said the word refresh. Or to be refreshed. Praise him. Recreation is refreshment by means of a pastime. Amen. And it's enjoyment, but brother, brother Brown, it's leisure. Praise him. It's playing, holiday. Recreation has purposes, which is to bring restoration. Amen. To build up vibes, memories. Praise him. To bring recovery, amusement. Amen. To bring pleasure and entertainment. And stuff like that. So different um, vacation, all of those things are um, embodied in the word recreation. Praise him. So families apparently need recreation. And unless we think about it. As something that is important, we are going, we're not going to pay any attention to it. I have seen too many times in my own specific unit where I am so taken up with everything that the things that I'm teaching now, I'm putting actually a knife to my throat. Metaphorically. Because there's so much more that needs to be done. So Brother Carl, sometimes we ask ourselves, what why is this happening or why is this not happening? The family needs to, needs recreation. It needs to be replenished, rebooted. Once you sometimes the computer now work, we have to restart it. To refresh it. That is what recreation does. It restart, refresh, reboot. 
is to find all of us come in and we morph into our different zones. You get it? Me go in my room, you go to your room. I go to my phone, you go to your phone. I go to my thing, you go to your thing. And we don't see each other. That's a problem. Your family is not... Hey, guess what happened? A lot of times we teach preacher. When, when, when God tell Adam said, to multiply and replenish. We only think about it in one way. We only want to multiply in one way. But today, this lesson is telling us that to replenish means to revitalize your family. Revite your love and your bond. The man says, who oh, some bonding? It's a critical part of maintaining your marriage and your family unit beyond. Praise him. Praise him. Families must keep in touch. And what do I mean by that? So Deacon, when I come in, I must touch base with my wife. Recreation is not a selfish thing. So it starts with good evening. Oh Lord. I'm mean, mean real good evening, you know. Because some people always say midday. Get me preacher? Sometime, sometime the only reason your wife knows if she had the garage come down. Really, sometime I'm so tired, preacher. When I come in, when I put it in the garage and lock it down, I sleep right there. That's crazy, preacher. My wife knows I'm home because guess what happened? The children are there and they didn't beam up. You know, like Star Trek, they didn't. They didn't just beam into the house. I must have brought them there. Where is honey? Where is Maurice? Where is Maureen? Where is Austin? Where is Pastor? Nobody can find me. Knock out. But recreation starts with manners. It starts with good evening. And do you understand that the things that we're going to talk about today, it has to start somewhere. How can we go play games together when we're not even like one another? How can we go start building memories when we can't say good afternoon? How can we go start playing Ludi or Domino when, when I don't care how your day was? You said preacher, not me. War in the east and west. You get the preacher? It doesn't, Brother Romain, it, it, your, family, your family doesn't live specifically in the state that you live. But every now and again, don't you touch base? Yes, sir. So it's critical in Vanji. If you and Sister Clark live in the same house, to come home and give her a look at chops. Sister Roach, yes, to acknowledge that. I know that I was somewhere else and you were, you were, we were in separate places, but now we are together. We are going to socialize. Can I say, Brother Riley, the socialization begins with touch Amen. it begins with um a hug it begins with a recognition that you are important to me so i'm gonna say when sister randa when i say mommy come play come play as whatever you 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 like she said yeah man because you feel loved exactly. tracks <laughs> are you serious bro <laughs> <laughs> Preacher, then I don't know what you're talking about. Sister, Sister Randa, hey, hey, hey. Sister Randa, hey now. I think your mom would love that. She would love, you know, preacher, you know what, preacher? Preacher, tell me I'm so little in my time. We're going to preach everything chop off. And the big, the preacher, the other people, like everything. I said, how are they doing? But they teach everything you do as a lesson. And this is what we want to bring out today. Now, we're not here just breaking Sabbath. We're not here just coming and just talk about play Ludi and Namunu. We're saying that there's something that your family can get from it that leads to a greater spiritual awakening in your family. Because, preacher, a lot of us start with what's going on at church. Oh, nobody not pray. Nobody not this, nobody not that. But guess what? We start from whatever. If you have an unhappy home, you can't, nobody not coming to come in. No, nice. Let's just jump on nice. It will be Amaziah nice. 
They just doing what's right, but not with a perfect heart, deacon. So everything starts at home. Yeah, people come to church and dance out that because they don't dance in the yard. I'm not, I'm not talking metaphoric dancing yard before you dance, bro. I'm talking about physical dancing. Anybody put on music and do some good thing? When I, when you ask Javan who the best dancer at my house is. You'll be surprised to know who it is. I'm not telling you. Praise the Lord. Brother, you're a prophet. The problem is that when I start, Brother Carl, everybody stop. I'm a show stopper. Which I'm good at with things. My dear, I'm a show stopper. It is so ridiculous. They have to stop and enjoy it. Because one of the biggest and most important things in your family recreation is laughter. The family that laughs together. He says, stay together. <laughs> but probably, yes. When you laugh together, you build happy memories. Do you understand what I'm saying? It's better than you over here, so me over here, so, and we're not communicating. When you're laughing, you're opening up a door for communication. Anybody get that? So when we're talking about family recreation, we're talking about revitalizing, replenishing the family over and over so it stays together. The memories are alive. The memories are good. You miss each other. And when those bonds build, my brother was talking about that wholesome bond builds, when people come in here, they are full of joy. The joy of the Lord in them because, Brother Brown, it starts at home. And then we start, no preacher. When, when we love who we can see, when we enjoy who we can see, is the church following this? When we love who we can see, when we have recreation with who we can see, then we can draw to God's side because it says, at his right hand, there is pleasure forevermore. You can enjoy God. Some of you only want to enjoy God. We come till we become Pharisee. We, 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 we pray we fast three times a week. We, we, uh, we pray three times a day. Not like that wicked over there. God, I am perfect. Not like my wife who get up in the morning and just do all these things. God, I'm, I'm, I'm right at the altar, Jesus. I'm here with you. No, God, I don't know we're with you. So, brethren, we are, we are not... So when we talk about recreation, we're talking about the, 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 bond, the bonds, Brother Roach said, the family bonds. We're talking about any kind of refreshing activity that keeps the family together, that keeps it going, keeps it replenished, keeps it moving and, 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 and turning. I'm not talking going backwards, turning forward and growing together. Shall we praise the Lord? And I can just say, brethren, you may not be doing the same things with Sister Buchanan has... A son that's approaching teenage. One that's, or adolescence, one that's 10. And one that's what, 6? Michael? 6, 9, and 11. Anybody get it? What appeals to Michael may not appeal to, Gabriel, to Brother Gabriel. Because there are different stages. What appeals to Isaac, Brother Roach, may not appeal to Africa. What appeals to Ashley may not appeal to Sister Cortez. So families have to consistently, mothers and fathers, husband and wives, extended, you now have to consistently think about what am I going to do to update, to make, to, to make sure that whatever you're doing is so balanced that everybody is involved. How can you take up something that requires reading when, when Michael is just now that the stage to read as Gabriel yet. He may be a reader, but he's not at the Lexi level or the readability level as Gabriel and Sammy. So you have to pick something where they can come. Shall we praise the Lord? I realize, Sister Lorena, that if we are serious as Christians, we can have better family lives. Our recreation can be wholesome, inexpensive, and be to the point where our families are happy. You don't have to be rich to be happy, you know? Did you know that you don't have to be rich to be joyful? 
You don't have to make six figures to have fun. Praise him. And unfortunately, brother Carl, sometimes we, 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 we live in that realm. And so today I pray as we, we, we open up that we will um, we'll be blessed. Solomon declares there's a time and a season. So there's a purpose. There, he says everything under the sun has a time. There's timing. And we're going to go into that in a little bit. Could we stand for the introduction? If you're at home, get engaged. If you look on the, 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 the screen at home, you'll see it. The introduction. And we're going to read it together. Everyone, even if you're looking at the YouTube screen, you should see the, the, the um, PowerPoint of the introduction. Let's read it together. Recreational activities are things you engage in for enjoyment and relaxation. Good recreation and entertainment renew body and mind. Critical for family well-being. Family recreation should include sharing vacations, playing table games, watching sports, and engaging in various outdoor activities. Married couples, both young and old, especially young people, need wholesome outlets. Husbands and wives should go on dates and treat each other, especially on special occasions. Example, wedding anniversaries. Parents and children need to spend as much time together, bonding and doing fun activities as well. Shall we praise the Lord? Is that clear? Is that something we can run with? Evangelist and Sister Clark, you need outlets. But your outlet does not, it doesn't preach. I don't have to mean preacher. 5,000 US dollars. It doesn't have to be include a diamond. <laughs> preacher, this is another one. This is another one. <laughs> preacher, <laughs> preacher, you. Isaac say yes. See, so you can't treat her too. Let her know what your heart is saying. Because if the heart is saying it, it's real. Sister Rina, a time is coming your way. But I can make it happen. Somebody give God a glory. Somebody praise his holy name. I love the note. It's almost crazy to comment because it's so clear. It's giving people advice. Sister Buchanan, hold beacon to it. Praise his holy name. Bridget, they can have the most glorious yard. You can set up a tent. She said several tents. Because cause his yard is a, has a big field here. She said front and back. She been there. So Deacon, you can, you can, you, are, you can set up tents for me too. I'm them them too. You have tent up there? There's so many ideas. Some of us, brethren, we are overthinking what this lesson is saying. But it's saying that people need outlets. Javon, he, 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 he pressure me day and night for those outlets. And sometimes you have to kind of carry them back because their outlets, it's not really with your family. It's with the people in Cobb County and the people in, in, in this. And the thing they want to get in there, go travel, go Alabama, go play. No. I don't have that kind of money. But what I'm saying is that we still, they still need outlets. Praise him. And so this note was well written and we, we applaud it. Question one. How might Philippians 4 8 help us to test questionable activities? Philippians 4 8. Sister Clark, just go to a mic, choose a mic. Oh, you have Praise the Lord. Praise him. Philippians, Philippians 4. 4, verse 8. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. Sister Clark, oh my, this scripture that you read, 
Philippians 4, 8, help us to test questionable activities as a family. Is this activity honest, mm -hmm. just, mm -hmm. pure? Mm -hmm. Is this a lovely activity mm -hmm. of good report? Yes. Does it emphasize virtue? Will someone praise us? Amen. Yeah. Clap your hands, no man. I am concerned. Do you know why I'm concerned? If it's Sister Clark, some of the things that we're engaged in, we don't ask these questions. Some of us as parents, we don't do any research. We just buy it for our kids and release it to them. And a lot of these things that it makes us, it's not for us. You get me, Mr. Deacon? And what I'm saying, if it just, if it, if it means your child is sitting by themselves, looking in a screen, by themselves for five, six, seven hours or all night, it probably is not wholesome. Bro, you get this? We are setting up people for success. Young Christians, young Christians, whatever you're using to entertain yourself, ask yourself, pull out Philippians 4 verse 8, is it wholesome? Is it just? Is it honest? Is it lovely? Is it pure? Is there any virtue in this? Can God sit with me while I'm doing this? Am I learning any lessons from this? Praise him. So I love the way it sets it out. It's not every activity is for the church. It's not every activity is going to, um, to be a blessing. And so there are some things, church, that will, um, that will bring negativity to your family. Can, can we list some of those things? Because we're going to go to the next question, the next number two, which actually asks us to list the wholesome things. So what are the things that maybe aren't appropriate that you may think of? Yeah, because it says, to quest what are questionable activities? What would we call questionable activities? So Sister Clark says, watching a movie with inappropriate content. Everybody may not agree, preacher, but she's giving her, her, um, her example. So Deacon, if you're, if you're sitting with your kids and you're watching something, that is where he says, you have to say, the Bible says, um, of good report. The people who rate it tells you what it's going to be about? Is it, do you need to guide your children through this? Is it R? Is it mature? Is it MA? Is it G? They give you a report. So what Sister Clark is saying, you, you and your family sit together because you decide that you're going to use that forum tonight, which you can. Do you research what you're going to do? Do you watch it before? So even if there's a part of it which is weird, you can actually are indifferent. You can say to your child, this is an example of, this is a non-example of what we should be doing. Things like that. Because every, everything now have some corrupt or something crazy. But, or you can, you can move through it. You can take a commercial break. I'm saying to us, we need to be more mindful of what is going into our children. Can we agree to that? Does it promote? Oh, come on again. Anybody else want to give me something? If you're on the line, text it to Brother Riley or Brother Powell. They'll just let me know. If you're here, anything that you think is questionable activities. Questionable activities? Anything? Yes? Something that you and your um your partner can watch just by themselves. Yeah. Anybody else can think of any question. So the only thing is questionable is our movies. Nothing else is questionable. 
I'm trying to find the other things that are questionable because this is vague. But, I, but I, yes, preacher. Um, we praise him. Yes. Um, to have the youngsters like Tessie go sleep over to some people we don't know. Yeah. Questionable activities. Clap your hands. Oh, oh, nobody not get that? Anybody hear what he's saying? So Sister Buchanan, Vanji is saying you, you need to be careful of who your children are bonding with. Anybody getting that? That's questionable preacher. Sometimes they're relatives, but they're not right. Sometimes they know them, but they're not right. And the problem preacher is that who else is going to be there? Ask questions. Some bonding activities, and that's how we talk about, we're now in a time, preacher, where we have what you call, Vanji, FaceTime. When we were growing up, we didn't even have phones. The internet didn't exist. Our phones, you had to go, rrr, rrr, till we get the flip, the ones that you're punching, till we get the flips, and, and so on. But now people can FaceTime, even across countries. And that is where you have so many dangers, Sister Clark. Even a phone call to bond, you have to still monitor. We're talking about recreation. A conversations build, build bonds, you know. But you still have to be careful. So let's say, Sister Clark, um, Sister Cortez is calling Sister Joanna. Who is at, who is at my house? Anybody get into my drift? Because what I'm saying, preacher, you just have them a band with somebody. Who is in the background of Cartes? Who is in Jonah's background watching what's going on? And so I'm saying to the church, be mindful of questionable activities. Any activity even can become questionable. Depends on different factors. So we are saying to the church, be more mindful. Yes? Brother Jim, you have your hand up? Brother Roach, you have your hand up, preacher? Praise the Lord. Amen. And this can be for any member of the family. Late coming home without reason, substantial reason. Late coming home. Was that a questionable activity? Yeah. How does that fit? Because look here. It may even tell me, it may come like 7.15. My child asked me like, Daddy, what, 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 what was going on? You understand? Because you, they, they know that I am always in. You understand? So, and if my wife, if my wife call me and she will come there, wake up at 8 o'clock. I mean, I have no, I mean, I have no reason to come at 8 o'clock. I mean, all the kids them talk when I say what's going on, you know, but if I keep something constant, you know, then you, you much better, you know, you better advice, you know. So what it does is that it depends if you didn't communicate and it depends on what happened because the, to cause you. So those are things that will make it questionable. All right. Shall we praise the Lord? Any other that any yes sir? Praise the Lord. Praise him. Um, I think one that we often overlooked and um is what we read. And I and I don't mean just the like, explicit contents, I mean like the, the entire mind frame of what it is. Because you're a children of God and you have some books that are you know, you know, some different the, uh, some the things that they, they talk about, the 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 direction they they, they tell you to think about, you know, that can be um questionable. Shall we praise the Lord? So let us say your family is doing a book club. Like you're you're reading a book together. Is it edifying to your family? I'm not saying it has to be the Bible. I'm not saying it has to. I'm just saying about what are they reading? You get what I'm saying? Even what they're what they're bond, what they're reading at school is important for you to to look at to be engaged with. The big thing right now is called monitoring. I love the the, the part of. Corinth Philippians 4 verse 8 that we are not doing, we are falling as the church is to say of good report. We are not reading no report. The things we are buying as consumers we are not reading what it is about, what is in it. 
Some of the things, I mean, the physical things, this is arming our kids physically. If you read what, what involving it, of good report, everything we buy of ingredients, everything we have buy of the, the manufacturers have to write what's in it and stuff like that. So whatever activity you're taking into account, please read. Uh, it may, Sister Buchanan, you, you have to be careful. You have a young one. He may put things in his mouth. Is it something that can choke him? Simple things like that, Reverend. Watch the report. It may see the, the things give you on it can choke infants. So you have to be mindful. You have to be be careful. All right, thank you. We could have explored more, but um, yes, brother, brother Brown. Praise the Lord. Praise him. Sorry, praise the Lord another time. Praise him. Praise his holy name. Sometimes we have to monitor the ring games that our kids play. For example, growing up, you have a game called Purple Touch. Mm -hmm. You can have your finger crossed like this when I catch up. You roll up your clothes to a certain inches. Yeah. So there are certain ring games that got meaning behind it. That we as parents don't know the meaning. So we have to ask our children, what is the ring game that they're playing? What's the meaning behind it? What, what is it they're learning from it? So Tell we have to monitor more. the ring games. But bro, they ain't playing no ring games here anymore. But you have a great point. It's a brilliant point. Some of them when we used to say at primary school, we couldn't play them. So why not why not some of those ring games, preacher? <laughs> oh yes, oh yes. <laughs> you have some game we used to play, preacher. Where we have to have we are next on and then box a preacher. You know what fight, Mr. Broco? Anybody remember those games? You walk on preacher, man or some boom! You, just, you feel like 20 people are boxer preacher. Yes, be be in box inappropriate. Not for it. That's not the only band with the children. Preacher, do you understand how war is that? Anybody, anybody ever play them? Be be wait 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 again. Be on box. Be box. Anywhere they say with B, you can the person license to box. Salad. Salad. It was wrong, 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 wrong. <laughs> Preacher, if, if when the man kick the ball, to, we are playing soccer. When the man kick the ball, we are playing Everybody kick you. I'm preacher, real room, the man room here, no man. Birds, huh? Necking. Ah, oh, they know about necking. They don't know about bird. But you get what I'm saying? Those things bring physical injury to your children. You know my people come home with one eye? You know what people come home and burn up? So you need to talk to your children. Uh, but you know what this is saying to a preacher? It's talking about family though. Stop. Family recreation. A lot of these things come when your children are bonding with one of a bandwidth. That is why you have to fill the void. They're missing it now, you know. That is why we we have. So if Javon have to play a salary kick with with one thousand rough boys or one or uh, twenty thirty of them on a play field, you may be you're probably missing your duty as Sister Melissa and Pastor to fill the void. And ring games, you have to teach them. It's not everything, as I said, preacher, preacher. I used to enjoy like maple dancing. I used to watch it. Are you growing in a circle? Reggie, if you know what demonic force of hell associated with that. Exactly. Just read it. Don't read, I'll just read it. For real. Just read. Just read about it. With a pole in the middle and people tying a string around it. I tie them and tie you up. But we, 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 it have to tie in an order. So preacher, it look clean. It look nice. And I used to enjoy it. But preacher, it was a tie up activity. Sister Rina, I read them myself, I realize. Say so all these things mix up, they mix up and blend up. Preach and then you have to see my food come back the next year. You know, you know what? Anybody watch me? Watch what I'm talking about, maple. So I'm coming to the hands. So what I'm saying is that let us look at the word good report differently. Look at good report. Let us read more as parents. Invest more in thinking about what we're about to do. 
And I'm going to say it to you. I love the part that says good report, preacher. Because you have to know the purpose behind doing something. So when you play, for example, a game of dominoes, what are the benefits? Here, listen to me. Listen carefully, Brother Roach. If you're pray, playing a game of dominoes with your family, how does it benefit your family? One, I'm just... It teach them how to count. Like you are... are it, they teach them how to recognize numbers. They teach them how to match colors or numbers together, no matter how young they are. It teach them, yeah, like Uno does the same thing. Um, it te Ludi teach them to skip count. I played after the third game, my kids knew how to count um, six plus something else. They knew that six and three makes nine. Because, and then I count in, this, they're going like six, one, two, three. You get it? It sets the, the, um, the, the, the foundation to understand math. You learn the social, you, you learn the social norms of it. That everything in life is not always hunky dory. You're going to lock out sometime. You're going to, somebody else has pass sometimes. Somebody is going to, they learn to take turns. All these children who can't wait, you, you set them, you set it as your family. And they see daddy's waiting carefully for his turn. Even though he's the man of the house. You know, say, boy, mommy and deacon, so um, you're going to play three times. You, know, you don't work like that. Unless you lock out everybody. And then you want to But what I'm saying, preacher, you learn to play turns. What happens is that your children, all of a sudden, when dinner is set, they learn about, they, they, they're applying terms. When they're going in the car, when they, they start to apply the things that you're learning, because it's socialization. Sister Clark. But Vanji, but Sister Rhonda, um, Sister Anne, a, a, a few of us, we worked with smaller children. Do you know that a philosophy of actually teaching them is through play? Do you get it, church? Learning through play. I, didn't, I studied it in school. I didn't accept it until I had to apply it. And then I realized that there's value in it. We pay to all play and no work, make Jack a dull boy. And, if, and, if, and if vice versa too. It's true. Anybody get what's going on? Anybody get what's, what's going on with this? There's value to it. It teach your children things. And when, when daddy said, mommy pass. And mommy said, hmm. And then immediately she, she laughs again. They realize that, oh, it's okay. There are going to be moments when things look a little rough, but it's still okay. They learn those social cues. C-U-E-S. Anybody get what I'm saying? So, Brother Brown, when you have 16-year-old, we're still a do-throw a tantrum. You never ramp it off with them. Or play appropriate with them for them to learn. You never, you never come to them or give them what they need when they're young. So they never went through, they never go through the different crises. These activities, recreational activities, they allow your children to experience the crises, the different crises that they need to go through in a safe way. I hope families are learning. So now you're an adult and you didn't get the chance to go through these crises in a safe way. It's all lost. No. All is not lost. Because you have the power over your mind. You have the, the power to create it now. To start today. To recognize that you need outlets. Praise his own name. Mm -hmm. Praise him. Praise his name. Praise him. Uh, there was a question that came in on the line, but there was also an answer that came to your question. So I'm going to read the answer first and then ask the question. So the questionable activity that says participating in social media challenges, um, and they kind of said specifically TikTok challenges. And then the question that came before that was at what age our children should be on social media or have a social media account? Shall we praise the Lord? Praise God. 
Um, is that a good one? Yes. That is excellent because we're living in the 21st century. So talking about ring games, some of these kids have never even played a ring game. They don't know of a clue to what ring or game is. Or they can't put it together and figure it out. But TikTok, everybody know what TikTok is. I had a would you rather on my board for the people I teach. And I said, would you rather be TikTok or Instagram? It's just to think creatively about your, uh, would you rather be. I, would you rather be a, a, a dog or a cat? You know, they, they um, and so they think about the, the thing. So people, you would be surprised at the things that these students said. The participants said yes. TikTok, Facebook, Instagram, all of that stuff, the challenges. Imagine you have challenges where the, the might drink all kind of things. Those are not appropriate. Um, ch challenge for trick people. I see one the other day when they were them banned from schools and stuff, where people they, they tell them to jump and then they kick your foot and all them something. There. Pranks. It's not appropriate. So our, our the um the age you have a recommended age that the companies do so you can sue them. Do you know they have that age on it? And most of it says 13. TikTok, when you all most of them, some of them are 16, some of them have age limits. But guess what happened? Can I talk to you about what happened? They put it at the lowest possible age that they can get away with. It doesn't mean it's appropriate. Oh, you should have them doing it unmonitored because the company say you can do it at 13. Because it's not every 13 is 13. So I'm 13 already yet. When I was in 13, I was in high school. Get me some preacher. So I'm 13 already yet. So I'm 13 is amateur. So I'm 13 is 7. 13 biologically, but chronologically. They don't know 13, so they're not ready for no TikTok. Praise him. And the challenges are inappropriate. A lot of them are inappropriate. And can I say it here? We have to monitor. And I'm preaching it by experience. I'm not even, I'm not just saying it because I can say it. It's by my own personal experience. I have to take it off phone. Bring him, bring him mother, bring him papa too. Bring the father to shame too. So it's not appropriate, children, to be engaged in anything that can bring shame to you. And preacher, here's my thing. They're not doing and starting challenges that will make the world wholesome. We're following them. Me not see the put on grace chillers and do on grace chillers something. Then put a Nicki Minaj and Manaji out. Then Beyonce to, I don't see nobody put on Danny McClurk in our friend and do some, something appropriate. Huh? Put on a ranking on there, show you how, how, how Christians praise. Blessing and honor, and glory and. Me not see that. Oh, the must start clap. Given to the, you know, ancient of days. Hey yeah, now, I tell you it's rough here. Preacher, no, Missy, we can't be and say, uh oh, uh oh, no, 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 no. I mash up the whole internet. Pastor, what's going on? And I'm put to shame. Deacon, and who this? Vanji, hey. And then you're put to shame because of a lack of monitoring. We, the group is in a combat though to Philippians 4. Good report. We say that's appropriate. And here's the next thing too. Here's the next thing. Deacon, it's true. It's, it, you might, we might say it, it's, there's, there's good and bad to that. Because at the same time, you still want your children to, um, I'm not saying when they're two or three or five or ten. But at some point, you need to show them how to use it appropriately. I think that's the problem. I always tell new people coming to my class that I have no rules. 
I have procedures. I don't tell them what they should not do. I tell them what they should do. Do you get it, Brother Roach? When you walk in, you say good afternoon. I don't care the age. You always, you say good morning, good afternoon. You say something to me. When you're leaving, tell me bye. Manners, right? I t when you come, this is exactly what you do. It's right in front of you. They know step by step what happens. They have a schedule. They know what to follow. Believe me. How oh, do we leave the class? We think we just get up and left. We, I say one, then get everything together and, and what they have. I say two, you know what they do? Stand up and push in the chair. I say three, they line up in alphabetical order. If, if it's a fire drill, it takes five seconds. If it's 35 in the class, it don't take more than seven or eight seconds to line up. One, two, three, they're standing in a line like that. You would be shocked to see how they work like a, like a billion dollars. Just one, two, three, Everybody's in the line. Go. When they're coming back, preacher, it's the same protocol. We can safely teach our children how to use these things. And we teach them about consequence. When you do something crazy, you lose it. And when they say I lose it, they take it from them for real. Get me? And Sister Buchanan, we have to monitor. Parents are lazy in 2021. Parents are lazy and have given up on monitoring. And Philippians 4 verse 8 is reaching pastor and people. We have given up on monitoring. I'm bridging these kids are smart. They can hide things from you. Make sure your friends are smarter than you. Come on, sister, 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 sister Bucky, you know what I'm teaching, sister Bucky, you preaching and teaching. These people know how to clue and hide what they're doing. I'm preaching, it's just a curse, I've got a good experience. If me come in, I hear a person. Some wrong preacher. Preacher, I, I don't mean it. Preacher, oh. God, look at him and say, Adam. I need to hear no sound. Preacher, my wife always says, Trevon. She said, I'm not telling you hi. I'm not saying hello. I expect you to be here. You get to be gone. These kids, they know when they're doing wrong things. But you know, I'm teaching them virtually. It's amazing. I can see the screen changing. And what I'm doing, not changing no screen. I see blue, yellow, white. They're playing all kind of games. Then they're playing everything else except for what I'm doing. But you know, one of the days, one of the days, preacher, everybody, they have to check out and go into somewhere else. Everybody gone. I, w I watch him. See me? And everybody somewhere else. When you wake up, I realize you say, "Ah, oh, Mr. Khan, where's everybody?" I say they've been they've, they've been in the other class fifteen minutes. You're not paying attention to anything I'm doing. And Bridget, it's the same thing we are experiencing with our children. They're smart. They know how to manipulate the things. You have to invest in understanding what they are looking at. All right, praise the Lord. Um, so yes, the age. The, I don't think there's a. You have to know your children. But if the, if the app gives you a minimum age, you have to know the maturity of your child and the level of monitoring that you can give. Those are the things that determine if, they, if they're doing. You have some kids who are brilliant preacher and they need certain devices, so you can't hide it from them. In 2021 in America, in Jamaica, when children have to be at home, you cannot tell me that your kids are not exposed to any kind of electronic device. They have to be. Oh, no. uh, you, okay, maybe you're living up in Pennsylvania with the Amish, but I'm telling you, if you're living anywhere else, your children must be exposed to a computer, a laptop, a tablet, a phone, to be able to learn. So what I'm saying to you, now it's our responsibility to monitor. When schools stop, what are they looking at? What are they watching? What are they involved with? I like my brethren. My brethren here will tell me, Pastor, Pastor, this is what Joanna is doing. I'm going to cause them, I'm going to vex them because I doubt my want them to do. My watch, be on the wall of Zion and watch me. Because I'm supposed to set example. And Sister Randall, when they show me, I'm not upset. 
Believe me, God, some spirit, me no vex. Because my child will learn and do better. I'm not saying I watch for your picnic. I mean, what? No, because I can't see everything. You know what I'm saying, preacher? Yeah, so, some people, preacher, I am not upset. And I dare you, I'm not gonna, I'm not upset. You see something out there, poor me now out there, I will find anything, but you see it. Show me. So me can break up my fellow ground. And you bring shame to charge, I bring shame to, to you. And so what I'm saying to the saints, monitor. Philippians 4, it's a good report. Read what you're putting into your children. And brethren, I'm gonna tell you, you have to, you, you have to be involved. Some of these things are not appropriate. Some of it promote violence. Too much of it too. Without any monitoring. And you find out, you know, I know what you're trying to find out. Why your children are, keep at each other. Because what they're consuming teach them about revenge. Preacher, do you, a, a God make preacher, a God make wheel of one of them a preacher. Because every show we used to watch, it start with a the character, then killing family. In going to a bush and learn karate for 10 years, every day. Ish, 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 ish. Anybody ever remember that? Sister Shanti, you know Wu Tang, bro. You know what I'm talking about, Wu Tang. And they go to them practice for 20 years. They don't read no Bible, you know, preacher? They don't read no Bible. 20 years. Ish, 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 ish. 20 years. And then they go back for the person and do what? Kill them. That's how we learn. Revenge. And then we come to church, preach, and I'm a re-teacher, re, re program every week. Love your neighbor as yourself. Turn the other cheek. But guess what? Who talking about mine? Hey, girl. We can't manage it now, sis. But I'm telling you, we have to monitor with kids. Preacher, we only, preacher, some of them only have John Lou in their mind, Jet Lee, Bruce Lee. The facts them, Jackie Chan. <laughs> but you know, I see, but you know, I see Christian bring a jump off as a power ranger and jump off as a, a masterpiece of a preacher. The boy still almost flying ahead in a preacher. No, boy, I'm telling you. Bridget, if you watch that with a child, you have to tell them, this, these people, it's a stunt, don't, don't do it. So the family must, must, um, must, it's important. There are questionable activities. We have listed a few. We've explored a few. It says, discuss and list the types of entertainment and recreation that you consider to be wholesome. So we kind of did that too. Whatever you're doing with your family, make sure that there's a learning, there's something that you're learning. And may I say, be intentional about telling them what they're learning from it. Praise the Lord with me, church. Praise the Lord with me, church. So, brother, if you're playing, explain to the children how to do it appropriately. Why, why, why them a pass? Why is it okay? Teach them, up in especially the younger. Brother Roach, tell them that taking a turn is important. Teach them the, the, the values from it. Scrabble and stuff. You learn new words, new vocabulary. You, you, when, when you put a word on it and the child don't want to let them use a dictionary, teach them how to use it. No, they're not only learning from teachers at school, they're learning from you too. Anybody get it? Soccer, whatever you're doing, you, you teach them how to, to play appropriately. To teach them not, um, how to tackle and not hurt somebody. And if, if you see somebody acting crazy, you know how to stop. I played a soccer game once, Deacon. And when, um, I don't know if you remember name, um, well, I big brother name. When Ricky tackled my Bridget, when he, when Bridget, he was upset with somebody else. He was upset with one of the bigger persons. And he couldn't, he couldn't manage. You know why I do preacher? He looked at the field, at the, the most ill-equipped fighter. The person from a Christian home, who's well-bred, brought up and not dragged out. And that man wrote, preacher, I, he, just, he was just watching me. He just, preacher, I see the world give up, play the man as I watch. I said, preacher, the man as I watch me, preacher. Preacher, a ball come near me, preacher. I want the man, the man goes, so whoop. Preacher, I remember doing a helicopter. Right. And preacher, when I fell, boof, there was no breath in me. Do you know what happened next? 
Everybody said, this game is finished. And they say, you never have to do brother George like that. And when I'm on the go and I say, all right, we say, yes, everybody, we get up, everybody go home. Vernon gone, oh, then everybody gone home. Do you know why? They just didn't think it was right. You know what I learned from that? That rough things can happen, people can pick on you, but you don't have to retaliate. You know what? You know what? Some can't fight him. Sometimes you have to, you have to know, your, know your strength too. You teach you know your strength. I can't fight him. And if I fight him, who am I going to go home to? So I'm, I'm, I'm saying to make sure that you're monitoring. My father wasn't there to defend me or my mother. You know, you just go to the background. Parents, you can monitor better. You can go with them. If they're old enough and they go, you teach them social cues. How many times do you see your children get involved in fracas? Ruption and war. Preacher, they must know when something will go wrong for get out of Dutch. Know when to walk away, know when to run. Anybody get what's going on? Teach your children when to move. When, they, when you see rain set up, take out the umbrella. They understand, yes sir, you understand the social cues. This, you can know when people are getting angry. Time to go, hey, I got to go. It's time to move away. And what I'm saying, Brother Roach, what to teach African, Australian, Isaac now is going to benefit them when they're older teens. Anybody get it? Um, I see Ivan is um his, his children. They excel really well in school. Anybody ever think about their formative years? Sister Anne. She played games with them, like those math games, boy, all the time. I go to their house. They, she always in, engaging them. She always, Monopoly, teach. And she always doing it with them. Yes, and the question she asked them, I always was, we, 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 we listen, we think about it. Those people are brilliant men. Probably they're born with some little genetics too, but I'm just saying, it comes through the, the bonding. Constantly teaching them, constantly challenging them all the time. And you look at them and say, they idle, the boys, I know. They, 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 don't, they don't look idle right now. Because those kids are in the church and they're still doing well in school. I'm saying there's a positive end to this. And brethren, can I say, wholesome too, you can, you can change the traditional things into things that are spiritual and challenge your kids' minds. Imagine me and Javen and Sister Melissa and Joanna playing a game of Scrabble, but now we're going to include words from the Bible too. And you get additional points if you have words from the Bible. You're not allowed to use um, um, proper nouns like names or things, but if you have a name from the Bible, you can use it on the board. How about that? You can adapt and change anything to be, to be preached upon, upon a godly level. Can we say amen? amen? Can we say amen? amen? Sister Rhonda, could you read the second note for me, please? The note on the question two. Sister, you have to come up here. Get your cord and use the mic here. Or you can just come without your cord because it's on the screen. Praise the Lord with her saints. Praise, Praise him. She's going to read a note for us. Praise the Lord. Praise him. Note. Does the Bible condemn having fun? No, it doesn't. Come to the message closer to the mic. Right. Thank you. Does the Bible condemn having fun? No. It doesn't. In fact, the Bible says that there is a time and place for everything. A time to laugh and a time to dance. Ecclesiastes 3 verse 4. Jesus Christ attended a wedding feast and also a big feast that Matthew Levi put on for him, Luke 5 29 and John 2 1 and 2. Clearly, Jesus had fun and did recreational activities too. May laughter and fun never be viewed as sin in your household. You want to praise him? Any part of it? Read for you. Uh, yes, um, the last part especially where it says, may laughter and fun never be viewed as sin in your household. Because um, even the last time that we learned this lesson, 
you know, it is thought that, you know, um, as family, you know, you need a bond, you need, yes. you need memories, you need to create um, different activities. Um, as you mentioned too, you said, you know, nothing pricey, mm -hmm. but just to sit, to laugh, to, to just talk, you know, to just build that moment and just seize in that moment. Uh, because here it says Jesus had fun and then Jesus set examples for us. Amen. So, you know, it is for us um, as individuals to, you know, not to even rely on the other person, but even to initiate stuff and just to have fun in our household and around us. Thank Give you. her a clap. Wonderful. Well done. Amen. Praise him. Praise him. Question three, will somebody in the line, somebody in the line want to read question three? Anybody ready, Brother Riley? Do we have a volunteer from the line to read three? Just open your mics and go. It says, what can church do, our church do, to promote and provide wholesome recreational activities and opportunities? What attitude or philosophy of life do you find in Ecclesiastes 3, 1 to 15, especially in verse 11 to 13? And I want you to read, whoever's reading, just read Ecclesiastes 3, 11, to 11 12, and 13. Because we have read it this morning. Is anybody indicating they want to read? Going once. Going twice. Would someone in here like to read? And then I will I will try again with four. Ecclesiastes three, eleven, twelve, and thirteen. It says, he has made everything beautiful in his time. Also, he has set the world in their heart so that no man can find out the work that God make it from the beginning of the end, from the beginning to the end. I know that there is no good in them, but for a man to rejoice and to do good in his life. And 13. Yes. And also that every man should eat and drink and enjoy the good of all his labor. It is the gift of God. Praise him. Praise him, saints. So we are, Sister Campbell, we want to answer. Um, what can our church do to promote and provide a wholesome recreational activities and opportunities? To enjoy what you have. Amen. Anybody want to tell me what attitude or philosophy of life do you find in Ecclesiastes 3? Oh, you just said that, to enjoy, enjoy. We should be content and enjoy life. Shall we praise the Lord? We should worship the Lord with me. Shall we praise his holy name? We should lift your hands and magnify the Lord. And but it, this is clear. The church should promote the whole man. Not just praying or fasting. But we should, um, we, should, we should promote the holistic man and woman. We should the complete male and female members of the church. We should promote what they can be and, and can become. And what they should be. Churches should promote healthy eating. Our doctrine forces it. But even within the healthy foods we can eat, you can't overdo it. Our church should promote um, recreation, we, moderation. We should also promote recreation. Don't hold the plan convention and fasting and prayer meeting and whatever. Plan events that promote socialization beyond those things which we do every week. So, um, shape the minds of parents like what this lesson is doing. To start it in their individual units, in their individual homes. So when we have sports day, we don't have the war and eruption. Everybody miss it in a preacher. When, when, we have, when we have convention, people have crossover food. 
Because if you teach them in Ludis, they have your turn. People wear their turn in the line, right? Oh, we are their turn. Anybody get what I'm saying? And preacher, when you have, when you're teaching your children right, and we come together now, and they run a race, and Carter's come third or second, she said, good job, and they feel good when we can do all that again. Good job, excellent, good job, good job, um, Africa. You did, you, you did so well today. Versus come on, God, and I can't stand me door, boy. Because your father said, I want winners. <laughs> Imagine you don't get nothing out tonight because you lose. Imagine you have people, man. They, they you're right, preacher. They go to a soccer tournament and be, they score a goal on them. They kill them when they go back home. It happened in a World Cup with one of those goalkeepers, the, the um, Colombian guy. Burn down your house and all that. Bridget, I'm saying, if you don't do the unit changes. If you don't teach them in your house, Brother Roach, when we come together like we do every year, except for last year, when we come together for those social activities, we're going to have problems. Preacher, even though I remember Brother Fraser and Brother Taylor and the last leg of the relay, it was amazing. And children understand if, they, if, if at home you can rib them. You know what rib means? Like mess with, like, like um, jive them. What's the word you use? No, like, I don't want to trick them, sis. You know, just, you know what I mean? Like, like mess with them. Say, man, I'm going to win today. I, Bridget, I, when, when the church was a lot smaller, we used to have a lot of more social, we used to have a lot of social sleepovers. We used to have different nights and stuff. And when, when I'm playing with them, I'll be like, sister, Ang, you're not going to win tonight. From the start, I'm just telling them, I'm, that's been jiving. They know. But it's set a tone that, you know, but brethren, they get it, that it's smiling. I'm not, like, too serious to the point where if I lose, I'm going home. I remember when I used to talk to, to Bishop Preacher, because he never liked games at all. The bishop I grew up with never liked games. And then one day, I always listened to him teach, and I accepted. So one day I went to his house, and I said, Bishop, um, why, why you don't like no kind of whatever? No, not all. And you know, my father is one of his disciples. So, Bridget, no, no, no card. Guy. We have no cards, no nothing at our house. We have tire, we'll we we put water and I will push it. We have board chuck, but we ain't got no, no work again. So, I went to Bishop and I said, Bishop, why is it that we, you don't? And he put his glasses on his nose and he said, Brother man, I was one of the biggest gamblers around what you hear. I used to gamble. When I played dumb and I played card, I gambled. So when I see those things, it bring back that thing. I can't go around that thing. And I love him and I respect him for it. I said, Bishop, I never even have no card at my house. I'm asking Bishop, guess what happened? I don't, I don't have the spirit of gambling. So can I try it? He said, maybe you can get with it, but I can't go back to it because it's going to push me to something when I don't want to go. I mean, I trust myself to do so. You're probably not exposed to it. We have to teach our kids to, to stay away from those inappropriate activities. Yeah. Like take, like your sister says, if you do this, I take this from you. You have to teach them not to gamble. Cause they will love the feeling. Going back to question one, anybody get what I'm saying? So brethren, when the church come together and doing all these great things, make sure say, your unit is correct. Your children are properly raised. So when we come together, we have a good time. And ministers have to say, well, we have cut out this kind of brethren and no behavior. If we cut out this kind of can't take loses. If you ever said that we can't take loses, we cannot take loss. Can you imagine, preacher? Your mother in the house says, I want winners. Yes, sir. <laughs> you, you have to teach your child that everybody ain't going to get a trophy. Amen. Everybody get a trophy. No. You did not win. Tomorrow, try again. Imagine when we are grow up, my oh my gosh. Come on, a preacher. So what I'm saying is let us teach our children the values for them to be successful. The church needs to model the whole man. Teach people how to eat, 
how to enjoy each other, how to socialize appropriately. That is why this lesson is critical to church. I must say, before I go to question four, that the church can promote all some recreational activities by being intentional about setting them in our calendars and forcing um, ministers and others to acknowledge that this is an important part of the bridging development. Anybody get it, preacher? Do you know that preacher Moses, when a man take on Israel preacher, he looked and he sent back home his wife and his two boys. When him Gershom, he sent home his children with Zipporah to Jethro Yad. Anybody remember that? And when Zipporah come back with the two boys after she married and leave, she coming back home because Moses is too busy. Oh, you missed that? Moses was too busy. He was about to do a thing. He said, thou art a bloody man. I'm saying to the church that you must put make time. Make time for family, for family memories. Make time to build with your family. Sister Melissa, you got to hold me to it. Sit and talk. We, we, got, we, we, we have to change some things. Javen, you got to hold us to it. Georgia, you got to hold us to it. Family time is going to be important. We got to start. We have to leave today's lesson with, 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 you call the word now? We got to do it. Praise him, my man. Praise him with me, saints. And so to promote wholesome families, we have to make time. Uh, do you know, do you know, do you know there was a phrase here? There was a phrase. Um, I don't know if it was somebody said it this morning. But when we talk about preacher, you have something they call discretionary income. Like after you have you, you, you put out after you pay all your bills and your savings and everything, if you have a little money left over, they call it you can use it at your discretion. Do you know that some of we now have no some of we now have no time? Discretionary time. You need to carve out time. So that you can use, you can use it with your family. You can't be just a work, work, work. So still you can. You have to create some time. Ministers, there have to be some time. You're cut out. Turn off your phone. You're cut out that time. The ministry will come back tomorrow. It will come back in the next two hours. The preacher, family time. It won't call you back. Put it on your phone. You can say family time will call you back. Sometimes the brethren needs assistance immediately. Preacher, me and your family time not to be the same. Call Vanji. We work together. Amen. There's nothing you can tell me that you can't tell him. Amen. If Vanji call Deacon. Amen. Brother Carl, do you have them on the number? Amen. Good preacher, call them. Amen. Unless you want to buy tent to buy Deacon when we talked about earlier. But otherwise than that, brethren, know your ministers. If your church have one, tell them so you need more than one. Because I'm on the man they have family time and you need help as a church. So we not church, no church, we so only have one. Brother Carl. And then I'm going to take question for Brother Carl. Who answer? Clap your hands. Everybody clap your hands. Preacher, believe me, I see it. I see your text about Isaiah. Yeah, me no, me answer, brother, God. Believe me, preacher, something come up right there. And I just want to say it, no, me remember. But he's smart. He said the same thing to preacher. So preacher answer. And guess what? I'm, you're fortified, right? That, brother, brother God, that is exactly what I'm talking about. So church, can I say the church must promote the whole man? Brother Roach, I like how you're sitting with your family back there. It's an important thing. You're building that security blanket for Sister Roach and the girls. You're building something that is important. Next week, she's going to be with them. You know what I mean? But she can hold on to the fact that when you're here, we're together. That's important, right? So brethren, let us, let us fight to build the whole man. 
or we eat, or we, or we, or we play, or we pray. And some of, some of the recreation, Sister Randa, is spiritual too. You know, we have some Bible games that are awesome. Yes. Egypt to Canaan. Yes, um, any game you can think about, you can create it into something. And the family is learning the same social things. But now they're also learning the Bibles together. You can get it, instead of giving them Facebook challenge, I'm going to kick down the one another, challenge to repeat the books of the Bible. Give them challenges. Challenge them to challenge them with whatever. Um, who can recite this without error this week? And you include now, you bring over the spiritual into the social. Praise his holy name. Question four. How can the thoughts of Mark 6, 31, 34, somebody on the line, find meaning in terms of today's recreational social needs? Somebody on the line is reading Mark 31, Mark 6, 31 to 32. Sorry. Who is coming? Brother Fraser, we're waiting. Go ahead. Yes, praise him. Praise the Lord. Um, greetings in the mighty name of Jesus. Greetings. Um, Mark 6, 31 and 32. And he said unto them, Come ye yourselves apart into a desert place, and rest a while, for there were many coming and going. And they had no leisure so much as to eat. And they departed into a desert place by ship privately. Praise the Lord. Shall we praise the Lord, church? So what I'm seeing here, Sister Marlon, can you answer how can, what, how can the thoughts of Mark 6, 31 to 32 find meaning in terms of today's recreation and social needs? Oh, praise the Lord. Um, it says that they had no leisure. So what did they do to, to, to fix it? They departed. They go. They, they departed and go. They Where did they go place. on? What did they go on? By a ship. In a ship to have fun. <laughs> so they went on a cruise. <laughs> you know, so I go and preach. <laughs> Praise him. Yeah. We are saying that Jesus saw what was going on. At 12, at 13, they walked around in prison. They were so busy that they couldn't even find time to eat. Can you imagine a man where are healed the sick? Can you imagine a man that's deacon that's doing so much good? Pe crowd around them every day, preacher. They were popular. They were the superstars of the day. The Pharisees jealous. The people loved them. Preacher, the Bible said they couldn't find time to Jesus carry them up on a ship. Because people, nobody else can walk on water. So ministers, brethren, you can take your family away for a minute. And deacon, you are an important preacher. But when you say, Pastor, I'm going to Louisiana. Guess what, preacher? You think we can't tell us, boy, boy, deacon, you can't live, you know? What? You deserve the time because you work hard in the ministry. Anybody get it? And what I'm saying to we as a church must put things together. Some can do different retreats or camps, different things for people to do those things, promoting it. Anybody get what I'm saying? Yes, Glory to God. So I, I believe, uh, and sometimes deacon is only you and sister Shanta. We've got to get to the place where um, um, Gabriel, Michael, and Sammy, being brothers now, they can come up to pastor. And you and sister Shanta have time for yourselves. The Bible says that they did not have any time for leisure. That means time to just be themselves for a minute. And because you're a Christian, you know, when you say be yourself, you don't mean broke out. You know? When I say let down a year, you don't mean when you go wild. I mean just a moment to reflect and chill and not to worry about anything. You just get a mind, a, a breather. 
So bringing it back, Vanji, you need that time. Every, every now and again, deacon, and, and deacon, everything do have to mean, preacher. You, are, you, 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 you come back more tired than when you leave. Preacher, sometimes we have to fly. Sometimes you have to drive. Sometimes you go in the backyard. And you find the different things. I'm promoting the, the whole man. I'm finding the meaning in what Jesus did. Jesus ensured that he told his disciples that they needed time to, to free up. I'm going to take the clock. Yeah, brother, brother Riley, what you got? And then you find this clock. Praise the Lord. Praise him. Praise him. Um, so we had a question online. Before I do that, I want to kind of add to something you were saying yes. the earlier about, um, you know, making the time to, to hang out or to, you know, to be with their family. And I wanted to say to the other members of the family to take that person into account. You know, if, if they say they're going to do something with you Tuesday, and you say Tuesday come and not now go and say something to them because as Pastor said, sometimes you forget, like for instance, me. Um, people might not realize like once I leave work, I actually start doing other stuff. Um, yeah. Especially for church. And I was saying to Sister Nikki says, sometimes you feel like I don't even get time for myself anymore. I had to like physically like set an alarm to say, yeah. take an hour and watch TV, or right. take an hour and do something. something else. You know, and sometimes it's, you have good intentions, and the good intentions lead you to a part where you start to disconnect. And I think there's even a scripture where it talks about, you know, even if our husband and wife go fast or something, you know, you have to talk to the, yes. the, the other Amen. spouse before you, you go ahead to make sure everything clear. You can't, you know, um, deprive them of, of what they want. And it's just a reminder just to, you know, Take that, make sure that person knows that you know you miss this time that you're supposed to spend with me. Sometimes they don't even remember because of all the cares of the world. Praise, um, praise the Lord. And um, the question that was online is, and I think it was based on um, when you were talking about um, Bishop, where he says he didn't play a certain game. So they asked, is making a bet for church is making a bet acceptable in church? And they say, for example, I bet someone they can't drink coffee for a month. And if they drink coffee before the month is over, they owe me some money, for instance. We don't do any kind of gambling. Bet is just another way to say gamble. We don't do it. We see, we see the ill effects of it. The covetousness, the different, the different sins it, en it entails. We don't do those. Any kind of chat during that. Anything you do should not have the kind of consequence you're going to lose something uh, we don't do that or accept any one of those types of activities as a church praise him no betting i bet you say no we don't do that we can give out challenges like um we do weight loss challenge we do different challenges which are beneficial but there are no cons if a person don't don't if, if if you win it's good if you don't win you try there's no why are you not on a testimony if you don't? No, we, hey, this, is, this is straight up. We don't gamble. We don't tolerate it. We don't put no, um, no, we don't use it in any form. I'm going to ask us to not do those kind of things. We don't, it's like exactly what was laid out, we're not doing it. This is like a challenge. If you don't, if you come for your month, I'm gonna, you're going to owe me something, no. Even if you're trying to get the person to do something valuable, don't, um, um, don't do that. Even the way we talk to our children, like um, some of the times we, we end up bribing them versus rewarding them. There's a difference between bribing and rewarding. Um, when you're saying, if you do this, you get $20, that's bribing. If they do something right and then you reward them, like you say, oh my gosh, you did such a good job. I'm so appreciative. Here's that. That's not bribing. That's different. Anybody hear what I just said? In doing your recreation, you don't have to bribe or bet or whatever. What I'm going to tell you now, you say to your children, if you get all A's, I give you $20, but that's bribing them. Yeah. If you, if they get all A's and then you say, I'm so happy for you, we're going to go, we're going to, we're going to do this because of you did that. That's 
that's different. That's rewarding them. There's a, there's a, there's a, um, um, there's, there are two different mindsets that happens. And some of these children, they may get everything and not get all of it. And then it's a problem. And those kids grow up with all kind of problem because they're, they're living from a bribery mindset. You know what I'm saying? Versus when they do it. Like me, when I work, when I get the pain. After work, then we get paid. I don't get paid first and then I work. You get what I'm saying? So I'm encouraging the church, don't bribe your kids. I see some advertisements now on TV where Pitney telling their parents that they're not vegetable. And I'm wondering in which world these things happen. And I'm declaring, brethren, again, we are seeing things because we don't socialize with them, we don't teach them from the young how to do it. Um, we're not going to stretch it out. It's it's right here. I'm going to take my hands. Praise the Lord. Praise him. All right. There are. I remember talking to this guy um, back home, preacher, and the man was trying to to show how serious he was. The man said, "I'm serious." Tell him now at sports. Yes, sir. All right. You have you have some people preacher who kind of think down the line there. Mm -hmm. And they are they are married, yes, but all I believe in happen to sit down and read some Jeremiah. I mean, and it is become coming a problem. It has been a problem in the relationship. If I am that way, how how can you help me to to change? Because of, of course, yeah, the next partner I don't want that, but a Jeremiah I deal with. So how oh, how how could you help me to get out of it? I mean, because obviously there is a problem. All right, that's for the Romeo. Oh, do you help? Oh, yeah, oh, yeah Jeremiah. Come out, come out of the dungeon. In response, I'm going to take Brother Powell and I'm going to take Sister Campbell. Two comments on this, and then I'll give you my thought. Praise him. Praise him. Um, I think. In order to reach someone, you have to first understand and then understand their level, right? And start there. Start from what they know. So if he's a man that is about scripture and reading and all that stuff, you have to start there. Bring out as we have we as we've seen the instances where the men of God, even Christ Himself, you know, took time apart to just get away, to to just, you know come out of, you know, the, the, the consistent kind of, I don't want to say ministry mindset, but in, in essence, you know, take time for yourself, take time for your family, take time for your wife. And then from there, you, you, you can build an art, implementing this and so forth, taking um, the suggestions, getting a schedule out and say, all right, you, you, you know you want to keep up a reading time, we still have to make time for wife. We still have to make time for children. So you say, all right, um, my reading hours, morning, night, in the day, but then there are, there are certain fragments, certain sections where wife, you have to get that hour too. Children have to get this hour too. And you kind of keep that balance. Sister Camp, thank you, Brother Paul. Clap him. Sister Campbell. Yeah. We praise the Lord. Praise him. Love. Greetings to the school. Greetings. Amen. I was thinking, um, pretty much in a sense, that, like Brother Paul, um, I would come from from a Bible standpoint to that person. Since as he's into reading and stuff like that, I was thinking to show that person from the scripture that Christ did make time for his disciples. He said he went up into the mountain. You know, he went away um, to, to um, chill out with the disciples. So I would show that person that. And I will also bring the importance to that person. Because some people, you know, Virgin, they really don't know. They don't know. They take, they, they take on. That's why it's so important to take time to know your partners and to talk and communicate. Because some people, you know, they see the man and they say, okay, are they see the woman and say, you know, he's a man of God. And that the man of God, he is really just... I, I mean, even to get into the motion of, you know, romantic, mm -mm. baby, let's go. You know, it's a militant kind of thing. No, military. No, kind of soft mode. No, kind of 
um, you know, affection, mm. you know, say, give me a kiss. It's like, huh, huh. You know, it's like wow. not, nothing, no, no, no I'm emotions. Like that, I'm not like that. No emotions behind no, it. Sir. It's almost like <laughs> it becomes like a job, you know? All right. Yet o'clock, time for that. That the time, you know. It, it, it. And so, therefore, in, you know, no even better. So you can talk to that person and say, why your relationship is in a rut and you, you know, your other partner is not happy. Because you need to step back and understand there's a thing God love balance and express to them. You know, Ecclesiastes is an excellent example. A time and a place for everything. A time for be, you know, into the words of God and whatever. Because God said, you know, marriage is a good thing. He says, um, and the, the scripture, I mean, I try, and the bed is undefiled, you know. Mar marriage is honorable. Amen. And the bed is undefiled. So I was just thinking along that line that God give us a time and a place to do things. Just like, oh, um, you know, you time to socialize, time to build, time to talk to your wife, yes, get, you know. And th those kind of things. And so once you show that person from the under, um, saying this, uh, um, past, the pastor, the question that Banji actually asked, it bring me back to the mind, to the person who said to the, um, say that him not playing no other music but gospel music when he might go in the mood. Can you imagine that? <laughs> me in a church and hear is all I need. Oh, and the thing where I come across my mind, that I'm a husband is all I need. No. There is a time and a place, and it's because people don't know. They think they are Christians, and they think that, you know, if I do this, I'm out the line. But you have to know um, what is right and what you need to do. And so once you teach that person, Vanji, and talk to that person, hopefully the light bulb will go off. Because some of these, they need a lot of processing to really recondition the mind and understand that this is a, that time, and that is that time. Praise him. Both, both commentators covered the things I wanted to say. So I don't have much to add. If you think about it, don't, that person's conditioned to think in that way. If you're an adult and you don't think that this is the only your condition to probably think that way. So the counselor preacher, the counselor have to find out um, why, did that, why is that mindset like that? What is driving that mindset? Maybe the person preacher um Needs, needs, uses that as a distraction for bigger issues. Can you get what I'm saying? Um, they, 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 they may have different underlying conditions that you need to explore and ex expose and to bring out to the front. And with proper counseling, showing them coming, coming from where they are to where they should be, showing them the importance of balance, of moderation, explaining to them the benefits of being balanced, and showing them the words, that, just as what the commentator said, to recondition their mind that it's not a sin. Jesus did it. Jesus set the example. Moses started to follow Jethro's example to free up more time to do other things, including spending time with his family. Showing from the words that you can, you can, um, you can be balanced in the word and get to great heights, and at the same time be balanced in the physical and get to great things. Love brother phrase and said, do something. You see, preacher, even the preacher where they can hear the words pouring out. At the same time, preacher, if you try to knock some sucker, you see how good he is here. If you try to do, I don't matter what you try, but he, he's really good at most things. How you get that? It, it's, it comes from somewhere. You have to be balanced. So you can be um, an excellent dancer like me and still preach a word. <laughs> oh, I got it not yet, but hey. Join up all the persons you should be. Yeah. <laughs> Oh man. Uh, yeah. just but preacher, I get it. Sister Bax has a comment, and then it's going to be the, the. I'm going to take the last note. Sister Baxter. We praise him. Praise, praise him. The and then Lord. I'm going to hand over back to Sister Kim. Praise the Lord. Praise him. Praise the Lord. Greetings, brethren. Greetings to the Sabbath school. Greetings. Um, I was trying to come in on question three earlier, but it didn't work. Um. We weren't, you weren't, guys weren't hearing me. But um, I just wanted to just say, um, with the, and it probably even ties in with the note at the end, but um, just that when we're doing the recreation, brethren, if we involve the children or our families, 
that um, one of the things that we found when we were studying last night was that it will create such a bond and it will create memories that, you know, when you sit down and you're, you're, you're thinking about different things, it'll bring you back to, oh, remember when we had the hula hoop race or whatever the case may be. I mean, I remember things from camp that we did. And up to this day, I do remember when the two juniors were doing a three-legged race um, and they both fell. And the bigger of the two lifted up the other one and basically took him down the, the, the trail because they were trying to win this race. And so these things, it brings memories back to you. It brings, the, it, it, it creates such a bond that, um, that it, you know, it just puts you at that place that when you, you sit back and you're, you're, you're rehashing things, you remember these things. And the other thing that I was thinking of is have your children to create, you know, we're talking about doing Bible challenges and that stuff, have them to read the scripture and them to create the, um, the Bible challenge, it gets them more involved in the scripture or it gets them more involved in, in family time. So, okay, you said of the time of this challenge, you know, what are we going to do? How long is it going to be for? And they'll be more engaged and be more willing. So even when you say, okay, time is time to have devotion, you might have more of a, um, a, a easier gathering because sometimes, you know, like, oh, no, I got this to do, I got this to do. But if you have that situation where they're, they're, they're creating the challenge or they're the ones that is leading out, it's more succinct and it's more easier to come together. And um, so these bonds that we build spills over into other things that we do. My few words. Mm -hmm. Praise him. Amen. Praise him. Amen. And sister, um, let us stand for the last note. I'm going to wrap up five and six, five and a note together. Let's all stand. Put up the note for me, preacher. The last note. Wholesome together, wholesome family activities that recognize God allow refreshment of body and mind. Essential to personal well-being is the commitment in the home for providing opportunities for relaxation and release from tension. How does your home measure up? Shall we praise the Lord? Whatever your family situation is, whether it was children, parents, um, extended family, you have a responsibility to build social, emotional learning. You need to build... Um, if you have <laughs> you realize that I'm going? I'm going to give her a minute. Yes. Praise the Lord. Praise God. I was in the mode of that. I was going to wrap this baby up. Praise the Lord. Praise Him. It's just very short. I was just thinking about, you know, some kids that I've come across, like in schools and stuff. And just so many of them are like on depression pills and just some heavy stuff because they're going through it. And I just wrote down, like, when you do the family recreation, it helps build stuff in your child as well, like self-esteem, reduce anxiety, depression. So it's, it's the bonding and the family time, good, but your child also walks away with something, you know, from it that can help them mentally. Because so many kids that, you know, like I said, I came across in school, if they don't have that love at home, they're seeking for it from the teacher. You know, they're seeking for it from their friends, from different outlets. And that's how they turn, you know, towards different things that aren't good for them. So I was just thinking that recreation actually builds something in your child. Praise the Lord. Praise him. Sing. Come to somebody worship the Lord. Amen. Somebody praise the Lord. Um, thank you, Sister Chantel. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, when I'm wrapping up, I'm going to make a statement in that. Um, wholesome family activities that recognize God alone, refreshment body um, of, of body and mind the essential to personal well-being is a commitment to the, for the home for providing opportunities provide the opportunities no matter how small rich, poor, whatever your conditions are, church you can do it we can change, I have a challenge for you at the end, but brethren just to wrap up the things I heard in this lesson and the things we heard from the last lesson and the things that we should be doing the benefits is that it builds the bonds, it builds the memories, it creates opportunities for your children to learn, it builds their vocabulary, it builds their sense of um, the society and math, and, and everything that you, any, every kind of learning you can think about. Sister, Sister Chantal, it's a few of them, it builds their self work and their self esteem, it builds that they're valuable, they're important. I never feared anything in school. Do you know why, preacher? 
When I'm at church and we're doing Bible quiz, you have to study a whole book. Yeah. You're going up against kids from Clarendon or Binlas or Buxton or whatever. And you have to come and you are representing. I have to do it in good nature and good love. What they're doing at school is not compared to that. They're not about Diane Dow at school. So, so school become that, like, man, this is nothing compared to what I have to do. Man, when Sister Olive have you, when Sister Olive have you, they can know what I'm talking about. We were going to go over and sister Ali Vavio, you have to know your memory verse. I have you out like this. Man, what did my school? Nobody at school not doing that. School became easier. Amen. At home, when you're talking about sister Nikki, or the other one, them, them bright too. She's unlike you, unlike you in our environment, we are like special. You're not extra special because everybody's special. You realize that everybody values something. You bring those qualities out and you start to shine. Now you become, Sammy, a shining light. Because how your mom treats you, when you go, you treat your friends with that same love. Because of the bond you have with your family, when you go out, you are extending that bond to somebody else. And so somebody was praying, Vandy was praying, that faith allows you to see light in a dark room. You can become that light to somebody. Praise his only name. And so I encourage everybody today to find... Um, create a family recreational plan this weekend. When you leave this lesson, that's my challenge to you. Wherever your family is, find some way. But brother, call your family, your family, they are grown, you know. But what can I do? Remember, your family don't have to live with you. What can I do to build memory with my family? To build a bond with my brother, my sister, my friends? Right? Amen. Challenge. Create a family recreational plan this weekend. Stand share, what, share the ideas. Send what you can do. Send, send it to somebody else. Encourage somebody else to do it. Married people, couples in the church, people with families that are live together, build a family recreational um, plan. And wives, all the husbands to it. Children, all your daddies to it and your mommies to it. Sure. Amen. Jesus, thank you. Yes. I will. You all do it. In Jesus' name. And back to Sister Melody. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Yes. You pray one time. And never come true. Don't believe that the answer is no. Mm -hmm. 